everyone, my name is Kitty and today we're going to be discussing the Leica SL3. Let's get it. I've been waiting for this upgrade for a few years now and it is an understatement with how giddy I am about how this camera is here. Maybe you feel the same like me. First impressions, the grip is so nice and comfortable. The best grip I've ever felt. The ergonomics on point and then some. It is like holding hands with the love of your life for the very first time. Just and the power button glows. It's so fun and unique. The shutter button feels so satisfying. It is just such luxury. And that alone just makes me want to go out and shoot more. Just so I can get the sense of, ah, it's so nice. Did I say that enough times? <laughs> wow, look at that. Does it not look perfect? The build, pew, pew, pew. It's an all metal solid body, so it's super durable and has an IP rating of 54. So you can be all romantic in the rain. For photos, you got a choice between 18, 36, and 60 megapixels while maintaining the full size of the sensor for each resolution. You get up to 8K for my video people. And yes, an upgraded autofocus system. Thank you. We have tilt action on this SL and so much better than the Q3. If you watched that video, I was actually struggling quite a bit. So the tension on this is just right. I was surprised to see that the interface also switched orientation when you went vertical or horizontal. You could see all the settings and not have to like turn your head when you need to change stuff. That was a nice detail. Lots of little details like that made this camera feel extra special. You have slots for both CF and SD cards. We have headphone and mic jacks and a full-size HDMI output for external monitors, a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have a new battery, new menu, and also new color coding. You have red for photo and yellow for video so you know which mode you're on immediately. This is no video taping. I see the sign now. I feel bad. So who is this camera for? Well, this is not their first camera. They have probably been shooting for quite some time. Someone in my last Leica video said someone who can afford it. So you will need a budget for this camera system, but it will be a good investment because you are someone who appreciates the Leica brand and their design quality. Maybe you're upgrading from the older SL2s and want that tilt screen, or maybe you're upgrading from a Q2 or a Q3 and want to play with some interchangeable lenses. This isn't as easy to carry around as the Qs, and I wouldn't call this like an everyday camera, but if you want to make it that way, you definitely can. You can do anything. This is a camera for someone who likes to take things a little bit slower. You can't really spray and pray. This isn't a sports or action camera, but you will get really high quality imagery. So, depends what you need. I'm going for really stationary shots. I feel like that's maybe the like look today. The features that I found most interesting, I really, really wanted to test the new autofocus. I loved the SL2 and SL2S, but that autofocus was just a little bit iffy and was a little bit hard to rely on. Performance and image quality. I've said it so many times and I will say it again, but the Leica image quality is just one of my favorite looks and you just have to check it out for yourself. Straight out of camera, the contrast, the colors, the way the yellows looked in this full shot, the way the reds look, the way like everything just cohesively looks so natural and modern, but also has this like vintage feel all at the same time. It's just a little balance of everything. And it just makes shooting so much fun. So I've been saying things are like Leica-esque, which means, well, for me, I think it's very like minimal 
composition, the lighting's really good. Usually there's like shadow and light play. Like I just picture if this was a photo art gallery, would this be printed and blown up and framed really nice? That's like ask. User experience, yes, so much fun. There's a lot of custom buttons, so let me talk about how I set mine up. On the top left, I kept it as photo video. On the top right, it's white balance. On the front, the upper one is video profiles. The bottom, I can change it from autofocus to manual real quick. Capture assistance, you can change this by using the function button. I personally like to have the right info on so I can see the video formats. Focus peaking, grid, and a leveler. There's several different profiles, so you don't have to put them all on one screen. You can have one on each one and flip through them easily because it might look a little bit distracting sometimes. Swipe modes, you can swipe left and right to change photo to video. If you swipe up, you can have quick functions. And if you swipe down, you can see your playback. Also, there's touchscreen features, like you can tap to focus. Another easy way to focus is to half press the shutter, obviously, and also push the joystick. And that joystick, oh, felt so good. And because this video isn't sponsored, I'm happy to sponsor it with our Tola Nocturnal Wave Skins. You can get them on your lenses, your cameras. So be sure to check out the link down below and send me a picture once you put it on there because I love seeing everyone's setups. Okay, back to the video. Speaking of focus, has it gotten any better? because that was one of the things I really wanted to test out and I'm happy to report good news. The improvements were made, thank goodness. However, it is still not perfect. I had trouble with face and body focus, so I kept it mostly on zone, on the fastest and most sensitive settings. And still, it's not that like snappy autofocus that you might be used to with Sony cameras, obviously if that's what you want, get a Sony camera. This is more of like a slow, gradual, like rack focus that you would see in the movies. So it is really nice transition and more cinematic. It was really hard for me to autofocus on kids opening Christmas presents or any fast moving subjects, so I wouldn't use it for that. That's when I would probably go in manual, which is why I have the custom button set up super easily on that front button there. But for the most part, like 85 to like 90% of my videos and photos were shot with autofocus, as opposed to like 70, 75 on the SL2. For lenses, I have the 24 to 70 2.8 to test with it. It is one of my favorite focal lengths for any type of camera, just that perfect range for shooting a lot of various different things. I also really love the 24 to 90 if you want it to go a little bit more telephoto. But you can go down this rabbit hole of amazing Leica glass, which is why Leica stands get on this boat and I completely understand. Battery life, there's a new battery on her now. I was seeing between an hour and a half to two and a half hours, depending on how I was shooting, photo versus video, how long I was leaving the screen on, different video formats, et cetera, et cetera. So it's gonna be different for everybody. But this SL3 does come with a dual battery charger. So if you get two batteries, which I would recommend, you can be charging them both at the same damn time. Yes, efficiency. And also don't forget you can charge with the USB-C too. Okay, it's been about two hours since we've been shooting mostly video and a couple photos. And I'm gonna charge this right now, the USB-C. We have three bars left, we started with five. So that's how the battery life is going so far. I only have one battery, so I'm gonna keep it charged as best as I can. It's got a little battery pack. And we're charging, good to go. Let's keep shooting. Feelings when I use it. This is a new category that I've added to these videos because I feel like it's important. You know, we mostly talk about the specs and pricing and features, which obviously is important when you're investing in your career. But lately I've been more into my feels on how cameras make me feel, especially if you've seen that vibe camera video that I posted a while ago. So yeah, how does the Leica SL3 camera make me feel? It definitely makes me feel like I'm good at what I do. It made me feel rich, but you know, it also made me feel anxious that someone was gonna steal it outside so I couldn't, you know, flex too hard and I also had to stay humble. Maybe, you know, these images or videos can end up in an art gallery or museum one day. I don't know why, I just got that vibe. Yeah, it made me feel happy and inspired. Also, really sad that I had to give it back. 
that's how I know I had a lot of fun with it is when I'm sad that I have to give it back. But yeah, I really did enjoy our camera dates together and you know, it made me feel really inspired to just shoot something more vulnerable with deeper meaning and concept and story. And this camera is worthy of my most important ideas and thoughts. That's how it made me feel. And yeah, for you, it could feel totally different. The biggest pro is that Leica build quality, hands down, the best ever made. You got the details, the materials, the way it just feels in your hand. It's so satisfying. The power button, the shutter, it just all feels like luxury. Leica image quality, say less. You have that tilt screen now. And I love the little details like how the screen orientates its settings when you go in vertical mode. And also it's an amazing hybrid camera if you wanna shoot up to 8K and 60 megapixels. Leica SL3. Cons, it is harder to travel with because of its all metal build. It is heavier than other full frame cameras, but it is still smaller and more compact than cinema setups. That cushiony neck strap was really, really nice, but I still had to hold it on my hip like a baby to carry it around. In the beginning, it wasn't easy to change video profiles, but once you have all your user settings dialed in, then you're good to go. And lastly, I'm gonna be annoying, but I would still love a flip out screen or a way for it to tilt up when I'm in vertical mode just for lower angles because I love to shoot that way. So I've been excitedly waiting to see what they're gonna do since playing with both the SL2s. And I definitely think the SL line is my favorite from the Leica brand, just being a video creator myself. I think it's the best of both worlds because they do have professional video features like shutter angles, histograms, audio ports, and ProRes, but it's still a really good hybrid camera for when I wanna do photos. The build quality and image quality are what make Leica so unique and special. And as someone who appreciates cameras, this one is definitely a satisfying one. After this one, be sure to watch the creative concept video shot on the Leica SL3 or my other Leica videos. Make sure to like to help the channel out and also to let me know if you like these type of videos. Comment and let me know what you guys think down below and subscribe for more camera content. That's a wrap. Thank you guys so much. Mm, done. I love wireless, but sometimes it's a little difficult. Where's my stylus? Should I do it one more time? I feel like I do it better one more time. Wow, we're almost there. Battery good, we're still recording. Check, check, mic check. <laughs>